director, the principal, the staff, and the students of Colonel Gunam Singh Public School, I extend a hearty welcome to all of you. And uh, we have gathered here today to have the fifth Sardar Harpal Singh Memorial in the public school debate. And every year we organize this debate in the fond memory of our founder principal Sardar Harpal Singh. The judges for the quarter final round are Mrs. Pram Paranjit Wadia, ex HOD English from Journal Nunam Singh Public School. We have with us Mrs. Mandi Bajwa, she is an English teacher from Journal Nunam Singh Public School. And also we are having Mrs. Kamaljit Kaur from GTV Bhardwa, she is also an English teacher over here. I request all the judges to please occupy their seats. The chairperson of the debate is Uthri Kaur and Hegel Deep Singh will be on duty of timekeeping. The topic for the quarter final debate is Greater wealth does not guarantee greater happiness. The two debating teams are Boulder Global School, Sangroon. They will speak for the motion. And Yarmindra Public School, Patiara, they will speak against the motion. To further, proceed, uh, to further proceed with the program, I request the chairperson to continue with it. A very pleasant morning to one and all present here. I am Lutri Kaur, House Prefect of Pate House, General to Nansing Public Schools and Rural. I feel very privileged to be given the opportunity to chair the quarter-final round of 5th Sardar Harpal Singh Memorial Inter-Public School Debate. I welcome both the teams, Golden Arts Global Schools and Rural and Yathundra Public School Patiala. Golden Arts Global Schools and Rural is being represented by Manat Bansal, Mansi, Prane Bansal and Ishika. These students are escorted by Mr. Ravindran Mohan Sharma. On the other hand, Yadhindra Public School Patiala is being represented by Vardhan Bansal as the lead speaker, Gurmila Kaur as the second speaker, Divrup Kaur Sandhu as third speaker, and an additional debater, Seerat Siddhu. These students are being escorted by Mrs. Karan Preet Kaur. So the topic for the debate of the quarter-final round is Greater wealth doesn't guarantee greater happiness. Golden Arts Global School is going to speak for the motion and Yadhinta Public School Patiala is going to speak against the motion. Before I commence the debate, I would like to mention the rules for the same. Each school will represent a team consisting of three speakers and an additional debater on the bench. A team would speak for or against the topic depending on the drops. The lead speaker of the proposition would begin the debate and speak for three minutes. A volume bell would be rung after two minutes and he would conclude at the end of the third minute. I repeat, the volume bell would be rung after two minutes but the speaker can still speak till the third minute. Thereafter, the opposition lead speaker would present his team's arguments against the motion. The second and third speakers of both the teams would alternatively carry on the debate further and speak for three minutes each. The speakers can expand their arguments further and also rebut the opposition in the allocated time of three minutes. At the end, the lead speakers or any members of the team will return to sum up their team's final arguments and rebut for three minutes. Fourth speaker can put forth his or views but it should be kept in mind that no extra marks will be given for the same. There are three eminent and neutral judges. The decision of the judges will be final and binding. Personal attack on a speaker, slander, slang vulgarity, and indifference conduct will be severely penalized. No point will be given beyond the allotted time after the final death. Now to begin with the debate, I call upon the lead speaker, Mansi from Golden Arts Global Schools and Group to put forth her points as well as counter it. Happiness resides not in possessions and not in gold. Happiness dwells in the soul. My warm greetings to the organizer, chairperson, jury and all the contestants. 
I am Mansi from Golden Earth Global School and I want to speak in favor of the motion that greater wealth doesn't guarantee greater happiness. Dear brothers and sisters, the foremost thing I want to say is that the truth is what you believe in and faith is having a reason. And the truth to me is that weighing happiness with money is very unparalleled thing to do because there are uncountable things that money can't buy and happiness is foremost of them. Happiness is a state of mind and it has nothing to do with the external world. In today's era, money is more important to people than their love, life and relationship. I feel like people have mistaken the definition of happiness. I want to say it loud and clear that happiness is a feeling. Yes, happiness is a feeling that creates and comes from within the joy and the feeling of satisfaction one gets. Now you tell me how happiness can be dependent on a paper printed by a machine. How money can provide family to someone being orphan. No amount of money can give love and happiness that real family can give. When I ask my opponents the definition of life, then I warn you, don't say that life is garden of roses and thorns. Because you are the ones to insist that wealth guarantees happiness. So, are you living life in a such a way that money is separating thorns for you? But sorry my friend, ironically it's impossible because sufferings are part of life and it's bitter truth of our life. Can't you take happiness in a different perspective? Happiness is such a big thing that lies in small things and comes up in an unexpected way. You know what brings happiness to Arunima Sina? Having a single leg and being able to climb Mount Everest and earning love and respect from a lot of people gives her happiness. Thus, wealth can't give you feelings and happiness is the greatest feeling. You know who about Chesley Christ? She had everything a human could ever wish for, but she doesn't have happiness, so she committed suicide. Happiness comes from spiritual wealth, not from material wealth. Happiness comes from giving, not from getting. When the money is used to share and to serve others, it's called happiness. Thank you. Now, I call upon the lead speaker, Vartan Pasal, from the opponent team from Yarkinda Public School, Patiala, to represent his views as well as comments. on the medical field through which she could go for mountaineering to climb Mount Everest which could be possible just because of money and again wealth is more than money and my dear proposition you've just been considering wealth as money but it, it, but it is much greater please check the Oxford Dictionary de uh, definition of wealth it breaks my heart and it floods my eyes to witness innocent children fighting for their lives when they should be happy playing and enjoying while educating themselves to achieve the future that they deserve. All because they have no money, no resources to survive, to be able to afford the basic necessities for life, which is the basic right of every human being born on this very surface of our planet. This is the condition for more than 1.2 billion children around the globe who lack the resources. Light is falling off their eyes at an innocent age when they don't even know that money, the lack of money is its root cause. The proposition believes themselves to be living in this utopic world where money is not a part of this equation. They need to acknowledge the fact that world runs on money. And even after being exposed to the harsh realities of life, they still believe that greater wealth does not guarantee greater happiness. I, as the first speaker, will be introducing our constructives and establishing them, whereas my second speaker will be elaborating on our arguments, giving examples from recent times and presenting statistics given by eminent schools such as Princeton and Wharton School and supported by countless websites including CNBC, Forbes and even Stanford. 
Our third speaker will be talking how wealth is actually health because health only comes with wealth and summarizing our arguments talking about the materialistic possessions which come with the wealth. Now I would like to consider a much bigger example of the Democratic Republic of Sri Lanka. That country recently went through a huge economic crisis and widespread poverty. This led to many unsatisfied Sri Lankans which had to go through situations which India went through during the British rule. They went through situations where in India mothers used to sell their children for a few days of food. And this proves how greater wealth can show greater happiness and not only individual human beings but countries as a whole are also striving for wealth. Thank you. Now, I call upon the second speaker, Manak Bansu from Golden Earth Global School to represent her views as well as commentary. Especially for people in 
impacted by poverty and economic turmoil. The Beatles famously sang about how money can't buy love, but recent studies seem to disprove that. The conclusion to King, uh, uh, Killingsworth's research has just been published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. By tracking reported happiness in relation to reported income, the study found that like the 2010 Princeton study, both life satisfaction and experience well-being increased with income. However, unlike the 2010 research, well-being continued to increase steeply past an annual income of $80,000, as it did below it. The conclusion, therefore, is that higher income still has already reached a plateau for many people in wealthy countries. In 2018, 18, a study looked at the emotional benefits of regular, regular cash transfers to women in poverty-stricken areas in Zambia. Over the next two years, the women reported greater satisfaction in life, both their own and their children. They could buy food, pay their rent, put a roof over the children's heads. Poverty is both a cause and consequence of poverty. Who meant that? Now let's take the example of our own country to conclude this debate once and for all. India's chronic unhappiness is a result of congestion in cities. Concerned, concerned about food security, water safety, and rising cost healthcare, women's safety, environmental degradation, which itself is linked to poor mental well-being. This explains why India remains at the bottom of happiness index rankings. A consensus thus arises. Income matters. If anyone has money, they have the luxury and logistical wherewithal to pursue things that they desire or just meet basic survival needs. A sizable literature shows this. So, to end my argument, I say wealth undeniably, indisputably, and unquestionably buys happiness. Period. Call upon the third speaker, Ishika, from Golden Age Global Schools and Rules to put forth her views as well as countries. Happy with our friends, but it is not guaranteed that you will be happy with it. A very long morning to an adult present here. Today, I, Ishika, student of Golden Age Global Senior Secondary School, is here to speak in the favor of the notion that greater wealth does not guarantee greater happiness. Happiness, not gold or prestige, is the ultimate currency. Nowadays, people are trying to acquire massive wealth in order to satisfy their needs. Today, the biggest question we all are facing is, can we buy happiness? But all of a sudden, it is not true and there is no simple answer to this question. People buy happiness in their own way. For example, a rich man may not be even happy and buy a luxury car, while a moon, a poor man would be happier and buy even a cycle. Actually, wealth does not, happiness does not depend on wealth. It depends on how much satisfied you are from what you want. Wealth and happiness are strong factors which are correlated with each other. Money can support you to become successful, but it is not determined to success. Money is numbers, and numbers can never end. If you take happiness in the form of money, then your search for happiness will never end. Being poor is your choice, especially if you believe that money is the only means to become rich. You want to live life socially, not economically. If you are rich and alone, you can buy good clothes and food. But it is not sure that you can buy happiness, because happiness comes from people who love you. Money is today, so cannot be tomorrow, but people who love you are always there for you. To someone, I would only like to say it's good to have money and things that money can buy. But it is good to check up once in a while and make sure that you haven't lost things so that money cannot buy. Thank you. I call upon the third speaker to the room. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. Being poor is one's own choice. Can you please justify that? Being poor. Being poor is just a choice, but we can't say that money is the only need to become rich. Poor, poor means that you'll be happy. You can be ha happy by being a poor. If you live in a small hut and you are living with your family, you can be happy with them. Sure. I call upon the third speaker, the 
Prof. Gur Sandhu from the Upper End team to share their views. Good morning, respected educators and worthy proposition. The third speaker of the proposition talked about the relationship between wealth and happiness. Let me establish that relationship for you. Wealth and happiness are not mutually exclusive nor explicitly related. In our life, all our gains may be in multiple banks or in multi-dimensional experiences. But in the end, these gains form a premise all together, and that is for the future generation. Thus, it is interdependency between wealth and happiness which is the mesh to drive several flaws in this thriving world. The proposition denies this because it refuses to face the concrete reality. Millions of people breathe in routines that are unfit and inhumane because they are poor. But there are people rich. If wealth didn't promise happiness, why do the poor have to cry under the burden of loans? Because they are forced by stark actuality, which proposition has tended to ignore. Since wealth is what assures education, facility of the aid for health. Health is wealth, but wealth is needed to procure health. The ability to travel to meet a distant relative who's on the brink of life or a progeny who is studying in a base part. All this comes with wealth. These are the bits and pieces that in the end create a collage for our happiness. So wealth has been all years in our systems to bring to us these. But is it as worthy a standby for us to slaughter our happiness? No. And that is what we as the opposition have underlined in today's argument. Why does one need aid in different realms like education and health to state an example, scholarships? Why do the farmers have to persistently protest to have minimum support price? The impetus is legitimate. Wealth is not only needed for the capitalistic materials which the proposition has regularly highlighted. Wealth is also needed to procure the basic socialistic necessities in life, which is the purchasing part in the hands of the minimum wage earning laborers who always are at the brink of poverty. This is why we all need aid and thus aid is provided to us by the government. The youth of the present and future needs to be financially independent. Why? Because when being dependent, happiness has to be collateral for them. Already suffering by climate change and socialistic causes, the proposition says that the youth should be mindful, the people should be mindful, and the people should be happy with the people whom they love. However, if the, people, if the person whom you love is dying in the hospital, or the person whom you are loving cannot buy basic health aid for himself, then how will you stay happy? How can you be mindful? Wealth has its own modus operandi to bring to us happiness. Because if it weren't for greater wealth guaranteeing greater happiness, then why would we all seek employment and nation's economic growth? Why would India seek development? Because it is the wealth of the nation and the individual that breeds their deity. Thank you so much. Now, I call upon Dr. Ajit Kumar, Professor of Economics, Social Science, of happiness. The first speaker of the proposition mentioned how happiness is a feeling. 
and yeah, I agree. But how does that feeling come? It comes by acquiring materialistic possessions which come with wealth. Now you talk about family, but how would you feel if that same very, very dear family member of yours is suffering in a hospital and you're not able to provide for them just because you don't have the wealth? Now again, if the same very family member of yours is not able to live adequately because you can't provide adequate food or even a shelter to them because you don't have the wealth. Hence again proving my point that wealth ensures greater happiness. We've used statistics, we've used quoted statistics by Princeton University which has been supported by CNBC and even Stanford University which clearly state that as the annual income of a person rise, the happiness index of that person also rise. And not just up to the $75,000 mark but up, it has no limit. The greater you grow economically, the greater you grow in terms of happiness. Thank you. Proud to approach.
but children the topic today is given is really very important both the two teams they spoke very well but when we talk of wealth it's not only materialistic things wealth is when we say health is wealth it means health in terms of wealth bestows us with so many things in life and you know gone are the days when it was being said that poverty is a great blessing no one can be satisfied with uh, sitting in a poor hut all the facilities of life comforts of life are related to certain things money is important it brings joy when it is you know not in excess when money comes in excess the children the people if you see so many criminal records of the people then it is you know even then people lose their morale that is why money is important but with this your values count a lot money is required for health money is required for shelter money is required to gain mental happiness but not too much money excess of everything is bad so both the teams they were to give their views definitely they were to speak according to what the topic was given maybe it was in favor of the motion or against the motion but conclusion is this that one should have money but not in excess that he may just get out of such aesthetic and realistic sense so everyone should use that is the things according to what the requirements are so that is what i would say here is the speakers spoke very well and those who are the listeners they should also learn that they should be the good future speakers right thank you so much god bless you all Thank you. 